Hello and welcome to another Excel VBA tutorial. In today's video, we are going to explore how to programmatically add references to our workbooks or, you know, whatever it might be, or VBA project. Maybe you have an Excel add-in uh, that you're trying to share with somebody, but it requires uh, having certain object libraries enabled. Well, we're gonna see how we can use uh, basically the VB IDE library in order to create new references programmatically. So something where the user doesn't have to go enable certain object libraries because the reality is uh, certain individuals, so they're, you know, they're just not very comfortable doing that, especially exploring the VBA editor. Um, and so we kind of have to do that on our own uh, for them. So with that being said, we're gonna jump into our Visual Basic Editor. <clears throat> okay, and there's my wonderful macro workbook that has way too many macros. Okay, and so I just inserted a new module. Uh, in order for this script to kind of be useful to anybody, uh, there's a couple things we have to do. Obviously, one of the first things that we have to do uh, in order to make our script work is we do have to enable an object library, but I am going to enable some other ones just for demonstration purposes and to kind of show you information that we can pull about those object libraries. But the one that we need for sure is the Visual Basic Extensibility Library. So if we go up to here to Tools, down to References, a uh, new window will pop up for you. Uh, at, you know, any kind of library you've used before, you will kind of see it right up here at the top. The one you're looking for is gonna be down, at Microsoft, and then it's gonna be Visual Basic for Applications Extensibility. So this will allow us to basically plug into the VBA editor itself uh, and control the different objects that are related to it. So we're gonna enable that one. <clears throat> uh, there is another one that we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna do the Outlook Object Library. Again, this is more for just demonstration purposes. Where's the other one? Oh, OneNote. Never used that one, to be honest. Yeah, we'll skip it for right now. Uh, and then I think the other two are at the top. Yes, they are. Okay, so we got Word and PowerPoint. So I'll press OK. So all together, we enabled four of those libraries. Again, just kind of the recap. Uh, the one that we need, that we absolutely need, is the Microsoft Visual Basic for Application. The Outlook, Word, and PowerPoint one are just kind of there for demonstration purposes uh, when we actually write our code. Okay, so first thing that we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna declare our variables. The first one is gonna be called VB Project. This is going to be a VB IDE project, not properties. VB project. So it's going to be a visual basic project object. Uh, we're also <clears throat> going to be taking that project and we're going to go into the references that belong to that particular project. So for this one, the next variable is going to be called VB refs with an S at the end. This will be a VB IDE references collection object. And then the final one will be a single reference from that collection and so that is almost identical. Just make sure you don't have that S at the end. So a single reference object. Okay, so now that we have our actual uh, variables, oh, well, we need to put this in a subroutine. Sorry about that. <laughs> we'll call uh, working with references. Yes, you do need to have that or else uh, it will not work. So you need to make sure it is in a... Uh, in a subroutine. Okay, and so now that we have that, <clears throat> we're gonna go and get the VBA project that belongs to this workbook. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, get the workbook VBA project, and then we're gonna set uh, that equal to VB project is equal to this workbook dot uh, VB project, so the Visual Basic project that belongs to this workbook. And if you look up here for book one, it's basically all the information that 
falls under this little uh, drop down right here. So sheet one, this workbook and the module. So the entire project is all these different components. And if we wanted to, like in the last video, we can go to each individual component. Um, and then certain components have other properties about them. So for example, if it's code, uh, if it's a code module, we can actually get the code that belongs to that module. Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna get the references. So we're gonna get the references to the VB project. We'll say that belong to the VB project. And so from here, we're gonna set VB refs equal to VB project. And then there is a reference collection property that belongs to that object. And this returns the references collection. And from here, what we can do is we can loop through each reference in the reference collection and print some details. And so this is kind of the more, uh, I would call it the interesting part. So we can say for each VB ref in VB references, go to the next one. And then from here, we're gonna print out some information. Uh, the first one is just gonna be a little bit of a line break so that way uh, we can distinguish the different ones because there is a lot of information. I wanna be able to kind of clearly see it for everyone who's looking at it. And so the next one will be the VB ref and then we'll get the name of that VB ref. And I'm gonna copy this a couple of times just to save, you know, time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's enough. Okay, VB name. The next one is the description of that library. The next one is the GUID. The next one is major. Next one is minor. Next one is full path. And then there's two more actually. Okay, I'm just gonna put that one down below. And then the next two are built-in. <clears throat> Not that one, built-in. And then the next one is type. Okay, so Let's just kind of go over what we're kind of looking at. So the first one is gonna return the name of that reference. The next one returns a description about that, uh, of that particular reference. This will make a little bit more sense when you see it. It's really the name that we're seeing up here in the actual reference library. The GUID is the unique ID that is assigned by the Windows API that allows us to basically create that object and reference it. It comes in handy if we ever want to create a reference. That will make a little bit more sense later. Major is the major version and then minor is the minor version. So you can have basically a major version that has uh, minor improvements. That's kind of the way I like to think about it. Then the full path is the full path to the actual library itself. Built-in is basically saying, is this a library that when we open up for Excel example, for, sorry, if we open up Excel, for example, is it already there? Yes, because we're in the Excel environment, it's built into the Excel application. PowerPoint, however, is not built into the Excel application. So that one should not return uh, true. And then VB rep type is the type of library that it is. Unfortunately, I have not been able to see anything else other than one. And when I tried going online, it didn't really give me any insight as to the different types that are out there. So I wish I could give some more insight on that, but unfortunately I have not seen it. However, if somebody else knows that, if you could share, I would much appreciate it. Okay, so now that we have that, let's run it. So I ran it, as you can tell, it printed out everything. The first one is Visual Basic for application. This is the description, GUID, major version, minor, here is the path to that library. Is it built in? Yes, and then type is zero. Excel is the next one, GUID. Next one, uh, that's the major version, minor. 
and then here is the path and then OLE automation office 16 PowerPoint so this is the one we added here's the GUID here is the path word here's the path outlook and then the VBIDE so the one that we also added to control this so a lot of good information here what I am going to do is I'm going to copy this PowerPoint one and I'm going to save this information because it will come in handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it, put that right there, comment it out so it doesn't cause any issues for us. And then I'm going to do that. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's see how we can remove a reference. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to set a reference to a single reference <laughs> and then from here there we actually will remove it and so what we'll do is we'll set a reference to a single library and so we'll set vbref equal to vbrefs dot item so we'll call the item method and then we'll pass through the index we can either pass through the index like the actual number or we can pass through the name in this example, the name is probably the way you want to go. So let's just do it like that. I want to work with the PowerPoint library. So I know the name is PowerPoint. So that's how we use the key method for the item method. It's the name of that library. And now that we have a, a basically a reference to that particular library, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the reference collection and we're going to call remove. And then it takes one parameter. And that is simply the library that you want to remove but it does expect it to be a reference object. So we need to pass through a reference object to the remove method. And then so if we run this, nothing really fancy, but I swear if I go right up here, you'll see it because um, it will print it out because it, it basically ran this section before actually deleting it. But if I delete it and then run it again, this pops up with an error because it's trying to remove it because it's saying, hey, you're trying to remove something that doesn't exist anymore or um, you're trying to create a reference to something that doesn't exist anymore. So that's proof to us that now it has been removed from our actual v Visual Basic project. So now that we've removed it, let's add it back in. But we'll do it programmatically. And so what I'll do is from here, there's two ways we can do it. We can either do it from add from GUID, so we pass through the GUID of the actual library itself, or we can add it from the file, which is mean we're gonna pass through the file path. I'll demonstrate both. So for example, let's add back the reference we removed. It's very straightforward. We're gonna go back into the references collection. And the first method we'll use is add from GUID. It does take a couple parameters. Uh, the first one is GUID, colon equal. Now, lucky for us, we already have that. Uh, normally, uh, I would have to look it up or some kind of method to actually go get it. And then from here, now that we have it, that's the first part. The second parameter is the major. Well, again, lucky for us, we already have it for us. We were gonna pass through two. And then the next one is minor and then this one will equal 12. So those are the three param parameters that we must pass through if we're gonna use the GUID method. Let's run it again. Cool, so it looks like it ran it. I'm gonna comment this out and let's see if it actually popped up here in our little list. So I'm gonna clear all that out and then we'll run it again. Hey, look at that. There is our new library and so as you can tell, here's also a little note. If you wanted to use the index, the index is determined in the order in which you probably put it into the actual library itself. So this is the last one that we added and we can see that it's now right here for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna remove it again and then we'll do the other method for actually adding it back in. And so we'll run it, clear that out. And then what I'll do is comment that out and then comment that out. Again, I'm gonna go back into the references collection, but this one I'm gonna do add from file. And then this one only takes one parameter called file name. And that's simply the path to that actual library itself. But lucky for us, we already have the file path right here. 
Bam, we're good to go. What's going on? Oh, it needs to be a string. Sorry about that. I thought I put quotation marks there. So we pass it through as a string, file name parameter. We should be good to go. Run it, we didn't get any errors, so I'm happy. Let's run it again and see if we see it at the bottom like we're expecting. Perfect, so now we're seeing that the PowerPoint library has been added again. So with that being said, we're finished with today's video. If you have any questions about kind of what we covered, um, you know, how we add libraries, uh, for example, how we might want to do this with like an add-in or something like that. It's pretty kind of basically the same logic. We would just have to have the add-in where the first portion of it <clears throat> would be actually going to um, fetch the file. Now, the only thing you got to kind of keep in mind with that is here I'm using early binding. So I'm actually creating a reference to a library that by default is not enabled. So uh, sometimes that gets us into trouble. What you can do is just do late binding, treat everything as an object, and then you are good to go. And then you can go and create the references. You could do that if you wanted to. Uh, everything should work relatively fine. You shouldn't really run into any issues. But uh, that's just something you do have to keep in mind is I am actually doing it with early binding because I want you guys to kind of understand the IntelliSense behind it. But you would more than likely have to do late binding if you wanted to do it like with an add-in or something like that. So uh, yeah, just kind of want to look that note out there. So that does it. Uh, thanks again for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.